Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nikki LaRose, and if you can't tell, my makeup's a little disheveled right now. I'm a little sweaty. After working a full day on set, let's say you have to go to dinner or do something after work and you want a quick, easy way to touch up your makeup, I got you. So I really wanna keep this video super authentic. So this is exactly what my makeup looks like when I arrived back home. I'm a, kind of a hot mess to be quite honest. So I just thought it'd be really helpful to share my best tips and like easiest tips on how to touch up your makeup, especially because I get asked on Instagram all the time how I like to touch up my makeup without having to like totally redo it. So these are gonna be really helpful tips. So first things first, I have a ton of oil on my skin. As you can see, I'm, I'm pretty shiny. Um, not only do I wear a lot of skincare underneath my makeup, I also wear a pretty thick SPF sunscreen underneath my makeup. So the combination, along with having more oily skin, my makeup just tends to be really shiny by the end of the day. Okay, so let me show you guys the exact way that I do this. And it typically involves me just sitting in my car after a really long day on set. And I really don't bother touching up my makeup if I'm going straight home. In fact, I don't do anything if I'm going straight home. I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna wash my face, if anything. But if I have a social obligation or a work dinner or just like a, a date night or anything along those lines, this is exactly how I touch up my makeup. So first things first, I'm gonna show you how to remove any excess oil. For my dry skin subscribers, you might wanna skip this. So this might not pertain to you, but if you're more oily or if you're maybe more sweaty, like if it's a hot day, this is gonna be a lifesaver. So what you wanna do is get tissue. And it doesn't have to be a huge tissue box, like they sell those little individual packets of tissue. I know they make those like oil blotting sheets, like those papers. This is an unpopular opinion. I really don't like those. And I, I think that they actually kind of mess up your makeup. And I'm, I'm sorry to say that. I know a lot of people like are hardcore fans of those things. I'm not the biggest fan. I always have tissue either in my purse or in the glove box of my car or in my makeup kit. There's tissues all around me at all hours of the day when I'm working. So they're just really handy is my point. So some people might know the trick where you like pull apart the tissue. I'm gonna try to do this quickly, even though I have long nails. So if you, rather than taking like the whole tissue, which is pretty thick and it's not gonna absorb as much oil because it is so thick, if you just separate it and you pull it apart and it's usually pretty easy to get them separated, just grab whatever side comes out thinner and you're gonna take it, use your fingertips and just press it in your oiliest areas. So generally speaking, that's gonna be your T-zone. Above your lip is a major place that I have to blot along the side of my nose and in this little nook right here. This is a spot on the face that throughout the day can look pretty bad. And the reason why I say that is because you know we get really oily in this portion of our face typically, like most of us do. And if you have makeup, if you wear foundation, it starts to crease and like kind of collect. Like so if you if you use pressed powder or loose powder on top of foundation, all those products start to collect in this little area. So by lifting it up with a tissue, you're just kind of taking off that excess product and really freshening it up. So I don't need to do too much more. I'm gonna hit like the side of my forehead. I don't even wanna show you because it's kind of gross, but like that's what you end up with. And this is everything you don't want at the end of the day. All that like excess oil mixed with makeup. So take that off. That's gonna be like your first step. And that right there, you can see like makes a huge difference, I think. And in person, it makes a huge difference. Okay, so now that we've removed that excess oil and shine from our skin or sweat, whatever the case is, this is the time where you want to bring some hydration back. I know it sounds counterintuitive because we just took that shine away and like that moisture by blotting down that oil, but you still wanna bring some glow and some freshness back to your skin because after a long day, no matter what you do for a living, what, and you don't have to be a makeup artist that's on set. Like if you're doing anything from nine to five and you're working, by the end of the day, your makeup and your skin, it will need some kind of just like refresher. And so I highly suggest traveling with some kind of setting spray. And it doesn't have to be 
any of these specific ones, but these are ones that I really love. Before I show you the one that I use, I'm gonna show you two options. So for my dry skin people out there, get something that's gonna have more hydrating and like calming and like just like overall nourishing ingredients. So this one's from Mario Badesco. It's a facial spray with aloe, adaptogens, and coconut water. So nothing in here is going to be good for oilier skin. It's gonna be more on the hydrating side and just like overall, it's gonna freshen your skin and it's gonna feel so nice at the end of the day to, to respray your skin after you've had makeup on it since like the morning. So this would be great for anyone with drier skin to refresh and kind of give you a little more hydration. And then for my oilier skin people, I love the Urban Decay All Nighter. This is a standard for setting sprays. If you haven't used it or haven't tried it, I highly suggest you do. This one is the ultra matte version. So like I said, if you're oily, like I am oily, this is a great, great setting spray. But I'm not gonna use either of these because what I like to do at this time of my day is reapply my sunscreen. And you know, th there's a lot of different opinions about like sunscreen setting sprays, like whether they work or not. It might just be like a placebo effect to be quite honest, but either way, it makes me happy to think that I'm maybe partially getting more protection from the sun by using a setting spray that has SPF in it. This one is from Kula, it's SPF 30, and it's a makeup setting sunscreen spray. But this is also a little more on the mattifying side. So since I am more oily, like I mentioned, it's gonna help to like remat my skin a little bit. But more importantly, it's gonna bring some hydration and just freshness back to my, my old makeup application from the morning. And it's going to give me a recoat of sunscreen. So I'm gonna shake this up. and I'm gonna get my entire face. And make sure I get my neck, especially when I'm driving home in the sun. At like this time of the year, the sun is like baking on my chest and my neck as I'm driving home or if I'm driving to dinner. And so I like will drench my neck with this stuff on my way home, like in that, that hour of the day where like the sun's coming down, but it's still super like strong and intense and you feel like you're getting a sunburn. So I like douse myself with that stuff. Okay, so this is totally dried down now. It doesn't take much time to dry down at all. And so now we're gonna kind of get into it. And so we're gonna talk about a couple of the areas that I need to revamp. And so I mentioned earlier that I had a face mask on for most of the day. And I also was wearing like my glasses to do makeup. So I have those like, creases on the side of my nose that we all get. Like if you're a glass wearer or if you wear sunglasses throughout the day and you're a makeup wearer on top of it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's that little area on the side of your nose where like the glasses just push the makeup and remove it. And it's just, it's physics. It's, you can't really avoid it. It's like, you know, when you blow your nose and you have makeup on, that tissue is gonna take the makeup off. It's the same exact thing. It, it's just kind of unavoidable. So let me show you how to fix it. I'm going to take just a small, slightly dense, but with a little fluff kind of concealer brush. This is a great brush to keep in your travel makeup bag, like whatever little makeup bag you keep in your purse or in your car, like on the go for touch-ups. I only keep literally one brush in that kind of makeup bag, my personal makeup bag. And that's gonna be like one, just like this, this kind of size. Another thing that I keep in my travel makeup bag for when I need a quick, easy touch-up is a cream or stick either concealer or foundation. I'm using a foundation and I have been for a really, really long time because of the ease of it. You don't wanna carry on a liquid foundation. It's not quite easy to touch up with a liquid foundation. I actually really don't recommend touching up with a liquid foundation. I personally think that creams, whether it's concealer or a foundation in a stick form are the easiest, most efficient way to touch up your makeup throughout the day or especially at the end of the day. Liquids can add just they're harder to blend on top of existing makeup, if that makes sense. Whereas creams, they're creamy, they're really emollient, they really tend to like glide on and you can really manipulate them more than you can a liquid. So I'm gonna use this stick foundation from Huda Beauty. It's a full coverage foundation with that little brush. This one's from Real Techniques. It's a 308 brush. And I'm just gonna tap onto the top, getting a very, very small amount of product. You don't wanna overdo it when you're reapplying any kind of makeup after a long day because the chances of it looking cakey are really high, so less is more. 
Before I go in, I'm going to buff it on the top of my hand and work it into the bristles. So it's almost barely there. It's like really worked into the brush. And I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna start to push around and re-manipulate my foundation that I had applied on my nose and the rest of my face at five in the morning today. So I'm gonna rework it. And you don't wanna be too aggressive. You don't wanna like push and blend and buff too hard because the more you buff in like a circular motion, you're actually just lifting up the makeup and you're really messing it up. Instead, you wanna push it and tap it in. So no extreme blending, just pushing and tapping. So now I'm going to tackle this side right here and you can see all that separation. Like you can see my skin underneath and then my makeup separated and like kind of clumped together in a really gross way. And I'm just going to tap it in and rework it into the side of my nose. So grabbing a little more, I'm gonna hit the side of my nose and just underneath my nose, where I definitely got really red, just kind of like wiping my nose and you know, overall being a human and breathing. So next I'm gonna tackle with a little more of that stick foundation, I'm going to recover that pimple that since I, like I said, I wore a mask at work today and uh, it just, I just rubbed it off. So it's gonna bring coverage back to my chin. Go back over my nose just one more time. And it's really hot in our studio right now, so I'm kind of sweating. And then another tip. So with whatever's left over on my brush, which is absolutely pretty much nothing, I'm gonna just kind of buff out any creases under my eye. And if you use a brush like this with like this kind of density with also like the fluffiness of it, it's like the perfect brush to buff out any creases that happen either on like your smile lines or especially under your eye, because that's just inevitable. Even though, even though we set our under eye concealer throughout the day, we're making constant expressions and it's just, you know, it, it kind of just happens, right? It's unfortunate that we crease here, but it's really hard to avoid when you are wearing makeup. Okay, so pimple is covered again. So now I'm gonna switch over to the beauty blender or beauty sponge that I used this morning to apply my foundation. And let's say you're not like a beauty blender type of person where like you don't like to apply your makeup initially with this. I still recommend if you're someone who needs to touch up your makeup at the end of the day and you want to look flawless again, I still recommend you pick one up because these are so ideal for touch-ups. And it's not something you expect because they're meant to apply makeup, right? They're not really geared or marketed towards touch-ups, but they are so, so ideal. There's something that I always keep with me with my clients, especially if I'm touching them up throughout the day. This is like, this is a lifesaver, this little, this little guy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna add any new product to this instead, I'm just going to take it and you can see it has some old makeup on it. And I don't mean old in a sense of like, this is like weeks old. I mean, it's old from the initial application that I used this for this morning, or, you know, it could be two days old. Let's not freak out. Like two days old is not a big deal. It's, it's not ideal, but don't give yourself too much of a hard time if you use it for two days without cleaning it, you know? So I'm just gonna take that side that has the makeup on it and I'm gonna start to press this onto my skin. And I think really the whole goal when you were trying to refresh a makeup application that you applied first thing in the morning, the whole goal is just not to disrupt that existing makeup. So you just wanna be really careful when you're, you know, when you're doing these steps, you don't wanna rub and like buff too aggressively because that's gonna disrupt that makeup that you applied hours and hours ago. And so 
just keep that in mind. It's all about not disrupting that makeup that we did super early this morning and rather just manipulating it. So we're just gonna tap, tap, tap. I'm gonna tap around my cheek. My blush got very messed up from wearing a mask and also just from general wear. So I am gonna touch that up. I'm going to do a really light layer of my cream blush one more time. So another thing that I love to have in like my to-go makeup bag is minis. I'm actually not sure if this is a mini product. It's just a really small blush. So it's a cream blush you can use on your lips or your cheeks, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. It's in the color Work. And so cream products, like just for the same reason why we used a stick foundation to do our touch-up, cream blushes are just gonna melt back onto your existing makeup and look really fresh. So it's gonna give like a glow back and like give like a really pretty finish rather than like packing on another powder blush, which you run the risk of it looking kind of muddy on the skin because it's you're, you're packing it on top of old makeup. This is just a fresher way of touching up your blush. So I'm gonna pack some on the top of my hand, which is my favorite way to apply it. I'm gonna take one end of my beauty sponge. I'm gonna take this end right here. And then I'm going to just press it and tap it onto my cheek and just bounce it on. And you can see too, like I'm, I'm not applying a lot of pressure because just to remind you again, you don't wanna disrupt that makeup that's on already. You wanna just revamp it and manipulate it so it looks like it's freshly applied. Same thing. Just tapping it on. And if you wear blush, you know that it's one of the first things that tends to fade from like your whole makeup look. I don't know what it is. There's just something about blush that throughout the day, it just tends to fade on our skin. So this is definitely one of my favorite things to touch up if I'm going to touch up my makeup. And I'm gonna bring this across my nose, which is what I did originally this early this morning for my makeup look. I think it looks so pretty. Okay, so blush is done. We're gonna leave it alone. Now we're gonna move on to the most important part. So we minimized the shine. We took away the oil with that tissue. We reset our makeup and refreshed it with the setting spray. And now we're going to powder. And I have been loving this one from Jouer. It is just, it's basically a translucent powder. So it's its colorless. Anyone can use this powder. It's their soft focus hydrate plus set powder. And it's, like I said, it's translucent. So this baby is always in my makeup bag in my purse. I love this so much. So to get more use out of our beauty sponge, I'm going to flip it to the flat side. I'm gonna use this to dip into my powder. And I'm gonna get a good amount because it's really hot today and I know I'm gonna start sweating again or getting really glowy again. So I'm gonna apply a decent amount of this powder. So that's what it's gonna look like. So you could probably tell I need powder pretty much all over. Like I mentioned, it's a really hot day. I've been running around LA all day long working. So I'm gonna give myself a nice generous coat of this powder, but feel free to use as much or as little as you need. So I'm gonna hit my chin. Hit my pimple. I'm gonna get the top of my lip or above my lip. And it's the same technique. I'm bouncing it onto my skin. You could also use a powder puff for this situation. Like any kind of powder puff, like something like this. These are amazing. I also always have these in my makeup bag. But if you're someone who wants to carry around as minimal products to touch up with that is possible, I suggest getting the most use out of your beauty sponge and just using this as your powder puff. It's gonna work exactly the same way. So I'm hit the side of my nose. Get my 
forehead in the center. A little bit on my temple. Now I want to point out, you'll notice that I didn't touch up my bronzer and you know, of course I'm wearing bronzer, right? Like I always wear bronzer. It's one of my favorite things to wear makeup wise, but I will say bronzer is a very tricky thing to touch up with. And generally we don't really need to touch up our bronzer too much. Like it's not like blush where it really tends to disappear on our skin. Bronzer, when you touch up with bronzer and you layer it too much, it can tend to look really patchy and it could also tend to look muddy. So you just have to be very careful. So just keep that in mind. We're kind of going for the bare, bare minimum of touch up products. So don't overdo it and don't layer too much of these products just because you wore them initially with your, with your makeup application in the morning, let's say, it doesn't mean you want to necessarily touch up every single one of those steps, if that makes sense. So another spot that I really like to powder down after a long day of wearing makeup, especially if I'm wearing either glosses or more of a creamy formula with lip products, naturally throughout the day and with reapplication, our body breaks down lip products, especially creamier formulas or especially lip glosses as well. Anything that's creamy or shiny, basically. So by the end of the day, and I've noticed this just from working on set with clients and applying their lipstick all day long, or even just on myself when I'm wearing like a satiny lipstick or something with a creamy finish to it or a gloss, it tends to move and it tends to migrate above the lip and around the lip line. And you don't want a sticky, glossy situation there. So before I actually reapply my lipstick, I'm going to take my powder, the same end, I'm going to I'm going to tap it over my whole lip. And you know what? This might be a personal preference. This, this tip might not be for everyone. So if you don't love this feeling or if you don't feel like it's necessary for you, just totally skip it. But for me, my lip area just gets kind of sweaty. And, you know, like I said, wearing lip products, they migrate and it just looks kind of like oily. So I love that step. So now I'm ready to go reapply my lipstick. I'm going to first go on with a lip liner. And this is the MAC Oak lip liner. This lip liner has been my best friend since I first used it, which was a really long time ago. I love this lip liner so much. So I'm going to get in there and just reapply my lip. Lip liner is on. And going back to multi-purpose products that I love to carry with me when I'm on the go, I'm gonna go back to my cream blush and I'm gonna apply this as my lipstick. So it's just nice and easy. You're not carrying around a ton of different products. It's not like a huge hassle. It just makes touching up so quick and so easy. So I'm gonna take that and tap it onto my lips. So those are my tips on how to touch up your makeup after wearing it all day long. So now I just want to reiterate the items that I think are essential for touching up. And that is going to be a translucent pressed powder. This is going to be a must to have in your, your makeup touch up kit, whether that's in your purse or on set or whatever the case is. So translucent powder, preferably pressed because nobody wants to carry around a loose powder and run the risk of of spilling loose powder in their car or on their lap, on their clothing or in their purse, whatever it is. 
Second thing I suggest you have on hand is a cream blush. It doesn't have to be this formula, any cream blush will do. I also wanna point out that having one that is a multi-purpose where you can use it on your cheeks and your lips is definitely a win. It makes it so much easier. Third product I think you should have on hand is either a stick foundation or a good cream concealer. Doesn't matter which formula, you just have to have some form of foundation. And I don't suggest carrying on a liquid, so that's why I suggest this guy. Lip liner is very optional. It's kind of a personal preference. I love lip liner. I'm addicted to it. I use it nonstop. So this is essential for me. Might not be essential for you. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. A small blending brush that is either on the flat side with a little bit of fluff, or it could be totally fluffy. Just something that's along these lines. Does not have to be exact, but something around this kind of size and density is going to be ideal for buffing and re-manipulating your existing makeup. So that is another crucial product. And then last but not least, and probably one of the most, if not the most important thing, other than our translucent powder is a beauty sponge, either a beauty sponge or a beauty blender, whatever you prefer, make sure you take this with you and it does not have to be clean. I'm just gonna point that out one more time. It sounds gross, it's really not. One day old or two days old at the max is going to be just fine. One more thing I wanna point out, try to keep your touch-up kit in something that is very easy to clean. This is a Huda Beauty bag. I got this in PR for free, but just to give you guys an example, anything that's like kind of plastic or, or anything that's easy to clean. And so you don't wanna do like a canvas bag. You can, it's totally fine, you can. But the reason why I'm pointing out this kind of bag and suggesting this kind of bag is because it's so easy to clean. So once you throw your used beauty blender in a bag, it's gonna leave makeup residue in there. It's just inevitable. And once you put your brush that has makeup on it too in there, it's gonna get the makeup bag dirty. So then also when you throw your products in there, the makeup's just gonna get on all of your products. It, it's kind of just, unless you put them in a separate bag, it's just gonna happen. And so the reason why I like bags like this is at the end of the day or at the end of the week, whatever it is, whatever you have time for, it's so much easier to clean the inside of this kind of bag than it is for like uh, a cloth bag or a canvas bag because with those you have to throw them in the washing machine let them air dry and all that stuff and it's just more of a process so if you have a bag like this great if you don't i don't want to recommend it because you know they, you have to throw it out and it's not the best for the environment but if you're in a pinch just take a sandwich bag or like a snack mix size bag because this you could pop your beauty blender in there your used makeup brush. And then if you really wanna get fancy, you could put this in your bigger makeup bag. And that way your brushes don't get your makeup dirty and there's no like filmy stuff on your palettes and things like that, which I really don't enjoy that. So this is another way to store it and it's pretty small and convenient and you can just kind of throw it in your bag, throw it in like a smaller handbag and you have like a quick, easy way to touch up your makeup, so. I love doing stuff like this on set for my clients. It's just really easy and really handy. So those are my tips. Those are all my tips. I hope you guys find these tips helpful. If you do, make sure you tell me in the comments. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel and let me know what you guys wanna see me do next. I would love to hear from you guys and I'll see you soon. Bye.